Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS Ranch on Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harakakurash. And um, this lesson was inspired by uh, the Big Bros lesson out in LA that you see on the screen here entitled, You Supposed to Feel That Way, Shaft in Their Minds. All right, and the, um, the brother was speaking on, um, you know, uh, a lot of different things, or as well, I uh, put it in the description box, but. Uh, the, the tribulation that we're going through is really giving us a uh, thicker skin, all right? Because the, the great tribulation that we're about to enter into, okay, as it says in the book of uh, Second Ezra, let's just start off with that. All right, uh, Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse, uh, uh, I'm going to start at verse 14. It says, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature, right? So, the um the trials and tribulations that we're going through is helping us put off the weak nature. All right. It's toughening us up. All right. Because like I was going to mention, you're, we're going to need uh, an amount of spiritual toughness, mental, uh, spiritual fortitude. All right. Rooted in faith to be able to endure into the end. As we're going to grab in Matthew, the 24th chapter, he that endures into the end, the same shall be saved. All right. So it ain't just anybody just going to make it through this time. All right. It's going to be the Holy Spirit resting upon us to make it through. But these things that we're going through right now is building us up for that time. All right. Whether it's losing certain things, all right, suffering certain things, that's that's building up our uh that's thickening up our skin, man. Okay? Like uh I'm gonna just read on. It says, verse 15, is set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste thee to flee from these times. All right, and that's what happens, man. Okay, at times we get concerned and worried about this and certain things when you lose it, it's just like fuck it, it is what it is, all right. And the scriptures say that the brother I quoted it in his lesson, I, I actually, I believe he read it. But um, um, in wisdom, talk and wisdom of Solomon it talks about he that getteth wisdom becomes quickly without care. All right. So as we grow in this wisdom, our, our mind, all right, uh, um, get some our affection grows for the things in heaven rather than the things on earth. We see how polluted it is. All right. We lose certain things to where we don't we don't give a damn about it. So as we grow in this wisdom, it, it makes us not to care about these things uh, uh, more and more, man. All right. Wisdom actually allows us to not be as compassionate for the things of this world. All right. Rather than the things in heaven, like it says in Wisdom of Solomon, uh, the 10th chapter. I'm going to grab that real quick before I finish that second Ezra. All right. This is Wisdom of Solomon, because just like with, uh, with Abraham and this is what the scripture is going into. All right. Abraham, he had compassion uh, for uh, Isaac, his son, whom the Lord uh, told him to sacrifice uh, to tempt him. Right. But because he had this wisdom, all right, the Holy Spirit resting upon him, it allowed him to put his uh, emotions to the side to do what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord, man. All right. To where if he had to lose Isaac, he was willing and ready to do that. So the same thing with, with us, man. And this is what this wisdom is teaching us. And not only this wisdom, but the trials and tribulations that the Lord is uh, bringing us to bringing us through to build up our spiritual toughness, man. Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 5. Moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto the most high and kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. All right. So through this wisdom, because that's what this chapter is going into, how wisdom saved those that attended upon her. Yeah, put this on. All right. Wisdom uh, saved those that attended upon her, uh, delivered from pain. Right. And so on and so forth when you read throughout this chapter. But the same thing, man, it's different things that you might care about that we are connected to in this world. But this wisdom allows us to put it to the side, man. All right. To set our affection on the things in heaven. Right. So that we'll be uh, willing and ready hey, to, to sacrifice those things, man. Everything should be on the altar. Right. Everything should be on the altar, re ready to sacrifice for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And having the mindset that whatever it is that I may lose, whatever it is that I may gain. All right. Whatever it may be that I'm going to continue to serve Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's the mindset uh, that we should have. All right. And, and and we're being proven all right, through these different uh, tribulations to to make sure that we uh, we we're in that right spirit, man. All right. So going back to Second Ezra, the 14th chapter. 
All right, Second Esther chapter 14 and verse uh, 15, it says, And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. Right, so there's greater evils to come, okay? And evils just means bad times, right? So there's going to be more bad things ahead of us, man. That's just to be plain. It says, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of the most high. So that's not anything to fret, all right? Because it says, uh, uh, it says, um, he whose mind is stayed upon the Lord, he shall keep him in perfect peace. So does that mean that there's not going to be chaos, all, uh, chaos around us? Nah, man. Our chaos will be around us, but if we got that spiritual, mental fortitude, if our mind is stayed upon the Lord, all right, we'll have a peace of mind to be able to endure it, man. All right, to where we could a hey, we could remain uh, uh, in the right spirit, man, not bugging out like it says in Isaiah the thirty third chapter, Isaiah thirty three and six. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So this wisdom and knowledge is going to allow us to be stable in the times that we're entering into, and in the things that we're going through right now. All right, reflecting back on the scriptures. Well, the scripture says this, the scripture says that. Well, fuck it, I might have to lose that, but I'm gonna get it back in the kingdom anyways, man. These different things is what's, what's allowing us being exercising these things now, all right, is important because we're coming into times where more evils are gonna be ahead of us, man. But it says, um, uh, I'm gonna read it again, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. Oh yeah, like I was gonna mention, I was gonna quote the book of Psalms. All right, it says, uh, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. All right, so as we're growing in faith, as we're growing in these different trials and tribulations, man, all right, as long as our mind is fixed on the Lord, man, all right, we're going to be uh, straight, man, and not afraid of these different things, man, to lose this and to lose that, because our trust is in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, but that's being built up right now, all right, through the, through the things that brothers are suffering through right now, all right? This is the book of uh, Luke, all right? Uh, it says, possess patience and might be loot. All right, this is Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls, right? So patience is synonymous with what? With sufferings, right? So it says, in your sufferings, possess ye your souls, meaning what happens? Self-control in the midst of sufferings, all right? Having a stable mind in the midst of the affliction, all right? That's what's being built up right now through the things that we're experiencing, man. All right. So there, there's a purpose to all the hell that we're going through, man. The Lord is really building us up, man. The scriptures talk about how the Lord is the captain of our salvation. All right. So we got to, hey, we got to know that, hey, man, the Lord know what he's doing, man. With this molding process that we're going through, man, the Lord is built, is make, uh, making us built for this battle. All right. That's ahead of, man, uh, ahead of us, man. It says, oh, my people make you ready to the battle and, then, and those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Right. So we got a, a, a great battle ahead of us. And the battle is the battle of faith. Ultimately, man. All right. It says fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So our faith is going to be tried in the book of Revelation. The third chapter it talks about uh, the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. Right. So our faith is going to be tried, man, from the wicked nigga on the street corner selling dope. All right. To uh, a man that's been in the faith 15, 20, 30 years, all of all of all of our faith is going to be tried. So we want to be getting strengthened and built up now and recognize these things that the Lord has taken us through to build us up in the spirit, man. All right. To, to, to grow in that spiritual uh, toughness, man, to be able to endure and have that self-control in the midst of uh, chaos, man. All right. So we are making haste in the time of trouble or so they, uh, that we don't uh, lose faith as soon as we get um, uh, uh, afflicted, man, All right? or catch a little hell, man. All right. The scripture says in the book of uh, Proverbs, I believe. I believe it's Proverbs. It might be Ecclesiastes. All right, this is uh, Proverbs 24 and 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Right, so we need to get strengthened up right now. All right, in this wisdom and knowledge and our faith, right? But the Lord is the one that's orchestrating the things that we're going through to build, build that up, all right? Because we can learn from different examples of the uh, of the scriptures. We can read what our forefathers went through and their reasoning, how they got through it, how they maintained faith. But it's one thing reading it, and then it's another thing experiencing it and being in those same situations in our forefathers' shoes, all right, and walking the same way that they walk, or learning from the examples, whether it's the mistakes that they made or the things that they did good and actually applying it so that we can come forth out of the fire as gold, you know? So that's what's happening now, man. So we got to... Uh, 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 really appreciate the, the the sufferings that we're going through, 
all right, to build us up for this time ahead of us, man. All right, this is the book of um, Matthew, uh, the 24th chapter. Matthew chapter 24 and verse uh, 13, it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's right. So those are the ones that are going to be saved, man. Those that endure unto the end. All right. They, they make it through the trials and tribulations. It talks about them that made it out of great tribulation in the book of Revelation. All right. Maintaining their faith because Yahweh I said it. When the son of man come, shall he find faith on earth? So who's going to be able to go through these sufferings and still have faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai uh, uh, when he returns, man? And this lets you know how bad it's going to get, man. The Lord is letting it be known, like, hey, hey, who, who's still going to have faith in me when I return, man? So it's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations that's going to shake up a lot of people's faith, all right? Whose strength is going to be shown forth to be small, man, all right? And that's because what? They don't have faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. They haven't been rooted. Why? Because they haven't been hearing these words and actually applying them. That's how we get rooted, all right, is hearing these words and applying them into our lives, man, so that when these tribulations come, that we'll be straight, man. Let me grab this in the book of Luke. All right, this is the book of uh, Luke chapter uh, six and verse, uh, I'm gonna start at verse 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So the Lord, if we're calling upon the Lord, we gotta be doing what he's told us to do. All right, in the book of St. John, it says, for we know that the Lord heareth not sinners, but him that doeth the will of the Most High, him he heareth. Right, so the Lord is going to hear those that are trying to be obedient, man. All right. The scripture says, he that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So we got to make sure that we're in a, a state of repentance, crying out unto the Lord and actually applying these precepts so that when we call out on the Lord, we know that we're going to be heard. All right. And now he's going to uh, 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 answer our prayers, man. So it says, verse 47, and whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently, vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. So those that are hearing these sayings and actually applying them, all right, they're going to be the ones that's going to be stable. They're going to be the ones that's actually rooted. All right, they're going to be the ones that still have their faith in the Lord. When he returns, the Lord is going to pour out his spirit upon these individuals, man. Okay. Because they've kept the word of his patience. They've been doing this, man. Actually about this word. Applying it to their lives, man. Men and women. All right. It says, uh, verse 40, 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. So that's what's going to happen to a lot of individuals, man. Okay. They're going to fold in the face of this adversity. Why? Because they haven't been taking this seriously, man. So going back to, uh, I, I read that Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now looking up this word endure, because it says he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now this word endure in the Edamon online says to undergo or suffer, especially without breaking. All right. To continue in existence, right? It says make hard, harden. Bear, tolerate, keep up, maintain, make hard. And that's the point that I want to grab, man. All right. The Lord is making us hard. He's making us tough. All right. You know how it is, man. You might lose something that you actually care about, man. And then you you you, you might feel sorrowful after it. But after you go through that, that stage of feel, feeling sorrowful for it, you, you got thick skin. You tough. You like, man, hey, F, the, F this, man. F the world. I don't give a damn anyways, man. Hey, like the brother did did the lesson going into how King David's men, all right, those men were chafed in their minds, man. Those were rough men, all right. You know, those were tough men, able to endure, right? And that's what's being built us, built up in us right now through the things that we're suffering, man. All right. And that's an important trait to have, man. That that mental, mental toughness, man, through the sorrow that we go through, man. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. And like they say in the world, man, no pain, no gain. All right. So if you're expecting the cakewalk, all right, everything to be all comfortable, well, you ain't gonna get built up. All right, because the 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 wind, all right, the tribulation is necessary for our growth, man. So the Lord knows what he's doing, all right, by taking us through these things, man. Because at the end of the day, everything that happens to us, everything that we go through, it's the Lord that's appointing it, man. All right, the Lord is very circumspect and what he uh or deliberate, should I say. All right. And what he brings us through and the reason why he's bringing us through it. 
All right, and we might not always know and understand why at that moment, all right, but when we see the fruit of it, it's like, man, I'm happy I went through that because now I'm built up and I can endure whatever it is that you're faced with because you've already been through sufferings. You've already been through pain to where it's like, shoot, this ain't nothing, man. All right. I didn't already suffer this. I don't already lost this. I didn't been through this type of pain before. All right. This is uh, uh, this is wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12 and verse um, 20. It says, for if thou didst punish the enemies of thy children and the condemned to death with such deliberation, giving them time and place whereby they might be delivered from their malice, with how great circumspection didst thou judge thine own sons? Right. So the different judgments that we go through, the different corrections, the chastisements, the Lord is very circumspect. All right. Very deliberate in what he's bringing upon us, man, and the purpose behind it. Like it talks about in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says when we are chastened, we're chastened for our profit. So the fire that we go through, the Lord is trying to get something out of us that's going to be profitable for our spirits to be able to uh, uh, get salvation. All right. Or to be able to go through different sufferings to help others when they go through similar sufferings, man. All right. It says, uh, with how great circumspection didst thou judge thine own sons unto whose fathers thou hast sworn and made covenants of good promises, man. All right, so the Lord ain't, we ain't just going through things all willy nilly, man. Now, the Lord is very strategic in what he's taking us through, man. All right, very strategic in this. So, we got to keep that in mind. So, going back to Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter in verse two, Ecclesiastes seven and two, it says, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. And the living is what? Those that have been quickened by this word, been made alive. That word quickened means to be made alive, right? So we're going to lay these things to the heart, seeing, seeing the profit and the sorrow, the profit and the pain, the profit and the sufferings that we're going through. All right. What it brings forth in us, man, how it molds us. All right. How it toughens us up. It says, verse four, verse three, sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. So our mind is made better when we go through the, the, the sorrow and the pain, the suffering. Right. We get closer into Yahweh, you may cry out more, man. All right. You stop caring about certain things more and, and, and lean in closer to your how about Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, these different things, man, hey, uh, are done for a reason, man. You know, to where we, hey, to where we in a position to where we fully rely and waiting on your how about Shem Yahweh Shai. Well, we just crying out to him. All right, begging him for deliverance. All right, for strength, for all these things, man, completely. And then watching him bring it to pass, man, building up our faith, right? All these things have a, a, a purpose behind it, man. All right, this is the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, and we're going to end it off with this, Lord's will. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, and verse uh, 7. Now, this is going into wisdom. All right, so it says, uh, And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues, for she, being wisdom, teacheth temperance. Right, that's having self-control, man. And prudence, that's having foresight, justice. All right, now our justice comes from living upright in the law. All right, by these laws. All right. Being morally sound, according to the word. Right. It says and fortitude. And that's the key that I want to harp on, man. Having fortitude. Right. So let's look up that word fortitude. And this is what wisdom teaches us. All right. Fortitude. It says moral strength, um, strength, force, firmness, manliness. Right. Doesn't the scripture says show yourselves men, man. Look, Job lost everything, man. He, he lost his, his uh, children. He lost his substance. He lost his health. All right. He was crying out in the bitterness of his soul, man. The Lord had told him, look, gird up thy loins as a man. I would demand it of thee. All right. Now imagine telling somebody that, man, that lost everything. They weeping and crying, you know, and you turn around and tell them like, man, look, man up, man. All right. Yeah, you lost your children. You lost this man up. You know, that would sound like it's insensitive, man. But this is how the Lord even dealt with Job in that time. All right. So just having it within our spirit to know, like, doesn't mean we aren't going to cry out to the Lord. We aren't going to weep, uh, weep and so on and so forth. But we got to be able to endure. All right. We got to be able to hey, uh, uh, wipe them tears and keep moving, man. Keep pushing forward, man. All right. We got to carry that cross, meaning the afflictions that we, we have to suffer and continue to move forward. Still follow the Lord, man. Regardless of the sufferings that we have to go through, that builds up that toughness, man. It says, um manliness from fortis strong brave uh and that's that's all all i really need on that man 
You know, but this is what this wisdom uh, teaches us, man. All right, it says, um, uh, which are such things, read in verse seven again, and if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues, for she teacheth temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude, which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. So this is of a, of a great profit, man, to have this, this, uh, this toughness, spiritual toughness that we're being groomed in right now to endure the evils ahead of us, man. So, Lord's word, I was at a fun. I'm going to end it right there and give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. And, and in truth, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.